All right, I'm going to talk randomly about the importance of a strength conditioning program for a racquetball player, for any athlete for that matter. Uh, I feel like there might have been a few things I left out that are extremely important uh, that I didn't put down on a sheet of paper. But first and foremost, the number one job of a strength conditioning coach is to keep your best players playing. And what that means is keep them injury free. And if you're not doing the right things to keep your athletes from getting an injury in the gym or helping them prevent injury while they're on the court, then you're just not doing your job, straight up. Most of these guys are great athletes anyways, <clears throat> and all they want to do is play their sport. And they should play their sport and play it a lot because that's how you get better. Uh, what we try to do is take those movements and make them more efficient, more functional, more explosive, more powerful, and by moving certain ways in the gym, we help them do those things better on the court while staying injury free. Uh, probably what I consider the most important part of your workout is going to be your warm up, your mobility training, your flexibility, and your stability. We've got to move through all three planes of motion every possible chance that we get. So we want to warm up that way, we want to train that way, we want to cool down that way. Uh, if you don't warm your athletes up in a diagonal plane of motion and they spend a lot of their time in that plane of motion in your sport, it's gonna, they're going to get injured. If you don't find out what's wrong with your athletes' joints before you start, they can't be functional. And if, you, and if you're not functional, you can't perform well. So there's a ground zero that we start at. You'll, get, uh, you'll go through a screening, and that screening, a really easy screening, would be the functional movement screen. And after we put you through a functional movement screen, we find out what's right and what's wrong with your body. Then we put you on a mobility program to improve those things. Um, as you're getting better with your mobility and your stability and your joints, you'll still continue to work out the way we want you to. There's just going to be some exercises you can't do and some that you can. And as you get better, we'll add more exercises to your routine. Now the six pillars of exercise is not just for athletes, it's for everybody. Hands down, it doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you're 80, I don't care if you're 13. You need to squat and deadlift, vertical push and pull, horizontal push and pull. Okay, you can't beat those. Those have been around since the beginning of time, and that came from strength coaches who are infinitely smarter than we are. Um, what we've learned over the years, uh, just from experience and also learning from other strength coaches around the nation, is that uh, we've got to have some sort of rotational move in there and some sort of anti-rotational move. And a lot of our rotational moves will come in the warm-up to help prepare your body to move and then also uh, with rotational power using a medicine ball or a barbell um, to help you use your hips, your abs, your obliques, your low back, basically your whole body at the same time with all your power coming through your hips, your core. Uh, Anti-rotational moves really help with your stability and those can start very very easily with a low plank and then move towards a resisted plank. Maybe, you know, I put Coach Rick on the ground and have him hold a plank and I wrap an exercise tube around him and I'm trying to pull him. And he won't let me pull. Those hips want to drop, but he's not letting those hips drop. Or maybe uh, something that, might, that you might have seen before is called the Paloff Press. Your body, when your arms are out in front of you holding a weight, on a cable that's this way, your body wants you wants to move in this direction, but you're not going to let it. So there's your anti-rotational move right there. What that does for your the, your core strength and core stability is ends up helping you out imminently on the court. Um, power moves. All athletes need to be powerful. A lot of power comes from the hips. You can argue whether you should do Olympic lifting. <laughs> Or not all day long. Uh, some athletes should and some athletes shouldn't. Remember that Olympic lifting is a legitimate sport. 
And those guys that we see do Olympic lifting have been doing it for so long that they make it look beautiful. When I went and got both my certifications in Olympic lifting, what they taught us in two days, uh, they typically spend several years teaching their athletes. Years. And if you know anything about Olympic lifting, there's a, a part of the lift is called the second pull. And they'll spend literally three or four or five months on the second pull alone after they've learned how to pick the bar up properly. <laughs> so if you have that amount of time with your athlete to teach them how to do Olympic lifting, sure, go ahead. I think a great alternative is to use kettlebells. I think they're a little easier to teach, a little easier to use. Um, and you get just as much power out of your body as you would using a bar and some Olympic weights. Um, when we add our power moves into the workout, we typically do those first because they're the most neurologically demanding and you've got a pretty decent rest period in between those depending on what our goals are for the day. Um, and then we move from our power move into supersets uh, or some, sometimes triple sets and quad sets of your basic, your basic six pillars. So squat, deadlift, chest press, shoulder press, and dumbbell row. And then from there, we move into our assistance lifts, which uh, can be fun for an elite athlete because they can pretty much do anything. And sometimes might be a little boring for a beginner, um, but very, very necessary. So single leg work, uh, crawls, rotating planks, tall planks, moving planks, push-ups, pull-ups, body rows on the TRX, anything like that um, that's a little bit less mentally and physically demanding at that time that will help improve our big lifts, our core lifts, the squat, the deadlift, the press, blah, 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 um, which will then also allow us to be able to do our Olympic lifts even better. And before you know it, you're extremely powerful, you're extremely strong, you're agile, your core strength and stability is through the roof, and you're moving better than you've ever moved before. And that's going to, several months down the road, that's going to lead to you winning more games and being a better athlete. Uh, I think that's it for now. All right. Talk to you all soon.